right, Corey, it's time to unleash the fury <laughs> to the Ink Masters. If you're enjoying these videos, make sure you head over to our YouTube at Inside the Game and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Alright Corey, so we got our hands on a, a rogue experience, man, and this game is pretty cool. You've done, this is more of your genre for yeah. sure, at least as far as the review games go. But for me, this one definitely struck home, dude. I loved the art style. Yeah, you know what? This one was really cool. It definitely had this um, metal slug kind of cartoony style to it, and it and you know what? It didn't. I didn't hate it by any stretch. Like you said, I've played a few of these roguelike games now. You know, side scroller, hack and slash, shoot 'em up kind of style games, and you know they all kind of differ in their own way. And this game definitely has its own kind of special mechanics, and it was it was really cool. Like I'm, I'm not gonna go into too much detail right yet. Let's kind of just jump into how this game starts off. We're actually a character named Fury, and the whole idea is to go unleashed throughout this entire game. And we're talking <laughs> combos, killing enemies, shooting, melee, whatever it takes. There's kind of like this Mario drop slam technique that I kind of was like, all right, this is cool. There's a lot of really interesting things here in this game. And like you said, the art style is kind of where it starts because it's this comic book style game. And that's kind of where it kind of goes on its own in this genre. Cause I've never played a game that kind of does it this way. And it's kind of like every level is a comic book and every tile is a different tile on the map that you navigate and that was really cool i thought that was kind of a really interesting experience yeah it's, it, i did think so too man the map design itself so every time you start in on the comic or the first map it's all randomly generated so you know the layout of everything whether or not it's a rectangle to your right or a square and then it leads down it's always random mm -hmm. but i mean i did find after a couple hours the randomly generated areas started to become samey which yes. was kind of annoying mm -hmm. but you know ultimately the map design was pretty cool man i i really like how there's kind of this overarching story where you're basically your fury and you're trying to impress the ink master <laughs> to make your comic succeed it's, yeah it's kind of like this overarching story where then the main story is each comic that you're fighting and you're just killing and destroying all evil Oh yeah, it's non-stop. And that's like you said, you're just you're just kind of killing everything in your path. Every, you know, tile you enter, there's new enemies or kind of uh, you know, traps or things you may need to have to navigate and it's all about timing your combos, making sure you're kind of keeping that kill chain alive because like we said it's a roguelike game, so health is definitely at a premium. It's not cheap to purchase in this game. So the idea no. is to try to get it you know, through combos by, you know, building up your combos, building up your skill tree that this game also has, which I thought was pretty cool. And it's, uh, not, I'm not going to say it's an extensive skill tree, but it gives you enough options that you can kind of, you know, tailor your play style, I think. You know, whether it be trying to collect more health when you kill enemies, or maybe you're looking for something more on the aggressor side where, you know, you're doing more damage or you're keeping your combo alive longer, which I thought was really cool because chaining things together in this game is what makes this game fun, right? It, it, it yeah, like, like we said, it, it has this kind of side scroller. I've played a few of these, but to me, it felt kind of contra esque because I'm nonstop. Like, I'm shooting nonstop. I'm only meleeing when I have to because I'm just shooting no matter what because I'm picking up guns. I was shooting a gun that shot uh, saw blades, man. It was like, <laughs> yeah. it's so cool. There's so many different kind of guns and weapons you can pick up through this game that really lets you customize your character that some of these games in this genre don't necessarily let you do. Yeah, I really liked the uh, amount of weapons and upgrades that you could actually get while you're playing, and then outside of combat, that skill tree as well. I thought that was very well oh, yeah. made. So alongside Corey killing everything and just you know causing total chaos, you actually have sometimes some side quests. You'll meet this vendor or some sort of merchant, and they'll be like, oh, if you get from here to here within a certain amount of time, you'll get a reward. Or some of them even, like you said earlier, they sell you health, they sell you weapon upgrades, or random kind of passive abilities. It's There's actually a ton of different things that you can purchase while you're playing the game. 
oh yeah, there's a ton of variety here, I think, with that aspect of it. And it wasn't necessarily something I expected either from this. And like I said, I've played a few of these and I'm not gonna keep repeating myself, but again, there's so many different games in this genre that I'm surprised that they're able to kind of, you know, stand out a little bit with all these kind of different interesting mechanics. Yeah, man. And of course, a bonus feature and a great feature to have in these kind of games is co op. Sorry, is co op. Oh, yeah. Coach co op, man. I personally actually didn't get to experience it, obviously, because of COVID and everything. I haven't really been able to get my hands on <laughs> yeah. it. But the option is there. And, you know, with these t types of games, having that option is perfect, man. Oh, yeah. It's so much fun because it is a difficult game. Like, there, even on easy, <laughs> this game is difficult. And we've got four modes here. We've got easy, difficult, and then two levels higher than difficult. So, I mean, it's not meant for, you know, the faint of heart here. This game no. is going to test you. So being able to sit on the couch with somebody else and experience the same things and hopefully have somebody help you along the way is definitely a huge feature here. Yeah, man. And basically the whole thing is you have mini bosses within each chapter, sometimes two in a chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> and then once you've taken out three, you end up fighting the main boss. And then once you beat him, you actually move on to the next world. Yeah. And there's three worlds, but here's the catch. You can't start off in the second world until you've actually beaten the game from start to finish, which is no easy task, man. <laughs> on easy, no. this game is insane. Yeah. So I, I kind of thought that was maybe a little too harsh. Like, uh, I got a little tired of playing through the jungle over and over and over again, and, yeah. and you know, moving forward to the second area where you're fighting neo-Nazis, it would have been nice to have maybe started there, just because. Like, I don't, I, you know, it's just like I said, it's just, you end up seeing the same thing in the jungle for hours mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, you don't end up progressing. One of my other complaints, and I just have to touch up on, is when you scroll from, you know, one screen to the next, I wish there was maybe a little more of like a buffer area because sometimes I, I would enter an area and then there would be monsters swarming me. So then I would accidentally scroll back and it just kind of does this weird like jank, jank, jank. Yep. Like it just kind of does this skip thing where, you know, other games like this, if you move to the next area, it kind of gives you that little buffer area. So yeah, and that, it, and that it was kind of frustrating. <laughs> and when you yeah. honestly, when you move to the area, say you killed a couple enemies and then you back out, you lose all that XP that you didn't pick up. Or that yeah. ink in this game. <laughs> yeah, and they and they they make you pay for it with stuff like that. And, and again, that's just what you know a small oversight where that could really change the experience of the game, right? So again, there's there's some a lot of good and there's you know a couple bad things about this one. So if we gotta score this one, Nate, what are you gonna give it? Well, dude, ultimately, I loved unleashing all the fury. I had a lot of fun with this. The <laughs> yeah. the kind of the overarching story and the graphics and the comic book style, it just it complemented the great game very well. I'm going to have to give this one a 7.5. It's not quite an 8, but it's a 7.5, man. You know what? I was thinking about this one for a little bit. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to score this game because I genuinely had a good time playing this game. And playing other games like it, this one does unique things that I enjoyed. But again, it, after a little bit of time, it just yeah. kind of wears on you. It was hard, and it's not easy to jump back in when you're getting your butt kicked all the time. <laughs> but you know what? For me, it's still a great game, and I think especially during times like this where people got a little extra time on their hands, this is definitely one worth playing and checking out. And if you have yeah. the opportunity to play with someone else, I think you're going to have a good time. I'm right there with you with a 7.5. Nice. With the unique art style and creative game mechanics, you'll find yourself unleashing fury through a cool comic book backdrop. But some issues with screen transitions can be frustrating, but I think overall you're going to have a good time.